of view. Catherine, you had a Yeah, question? I just have a question. Um, I know all this analysis was about our airport, and out of curiosity, um, how does the Lewiston Airport fit into this scenario? Well, I didn't do an analysis of the Lewiston I know Airport. I've just yeah, <coughs> but most of our leakage isn't Lewiston. Mm -hmm. Only eleven percent. Okay. The leakage is Spokane. Mm -hmm. So there's not. So if the if the uh, POW Airport were to go away, uh, I don't think a little bit would go to Lewiston, but I think most of it's going to go to Spokane. So it's going to leak completely out of the economy. Um, and one of the, there's several issues with this. One is that, again, our trade corridors are east-west. When people think here they're looking, they're looking west or they're looking east, they're not looking north and south. When you travel to Lewiston, you, you might as well be in a different, different state, quite frankly. I mean, it's a, it's a very different culture and a different world. And so the firms are tied to the PUW airport and north, not to the, not to the Lewiston airport uh, south. Um, and so, I don't expect I don't expect that if the POW were to go away, that the growth the growth would shift down would mm -hmm. shift down to Lewiston. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Peterson, um, in your pyramid of job growth, that the Washington numbers are quite a bit lower, like 158 versus 300. What what would you attribute that to? Different methodologies. Yeah, I wanted to what what the goal of that little pyramid was was to show that the numbers I had were reasonable. Um, and so each one of those studies had a little different methodology. The methodology I followed, the closest one was the Idaho Department of Transportation's Aero study. Um, but but the, the basic difference is just differences in methodologies that they followed. So they perhaps didn't, they were just including what was going on in Washington and not Idaho? Or? Well, I don't think they included, um, I don't think I, off the top of my head, they included tourism in their, in their analysis. So it was, it was basically a different approach. So what both of those studies were, they were statewide studies that looked at each individual airport within the respective states. So they came up with a common methodology for both those studies so that they could have a common benchmark to rate all of the airports within each state. Dan, you had a... Yeah, <clears throat> it's kind of piggybacks on what Catherine was asking. You know, on, your, on page 15 there, you were talking about how much, how many more boardings you'd have and I'm like well is this closing down Lewiston and then that next map you know blew that out of the water with you were showing how the you, the service area was more north of you know basically north of Genesee it looked like a um, couple of other things uh, where on on in the aviation you know you had uh, you know interstate where's MedStar in there are they they at the the general aviation maybe in general I put them in general aviation okay yes. and then uh you talked about on page 11 the 226 five-year jobs, which is the construction, and then the next page, page 12, the, the 300. Are those ongoing jobs that, that are going to continue after, yes. or is that just during the five-year the op No, the, the construction are, are for five years. They're right. annual for five years. The, the current estimation for the operation is what's actually in place right now. Okay. Yeah. And then there was one more thing. Oh, just a comment. I think you, you really just showed the industry, quote, unquote, you know, I don't know how industrial a university is, but you know it's yeah. it's a big employer. But you know, I I just wanted to mention that that doesn't even count. You know, like hospitals or retail or any of those no. other service industries that that would also probably benefit from well, clearly, whatever happens yeah. there. So, you know, with this, the fingers reach out a lot farther than even what you show. I think. Yes, um, I I focused the industries I chose were clearly export industries. Right. When you get into the rest of them, tourism and healthcare, they're both export and, and uh, they're, they're both exogenous and endogenous uh, industries. They're harder to model that way, you know. Uh, what, what the export industries do, what we call export industries, these are industries that clearly uh, the, the, the primary uh, revenues that they create are outside the regional economy. So they're bringing new money <coughs> into the economy and we can define, we, we, we can measure that in a very definitive way. One, one point I want to make, and then I'll get to you, John, uh, is that you, you talked about Schweitzer Engineering there. And one thing that I do know is they employ 500 people who live in this city and 900 in our county. And it just gives me a stomachache to think and what would happen if they didn't have those jobs here because it's a big deal for our community, huge for our overall wealth. John? Uh, yes, Dr. Peterson, um, not to put too, too fine a point on it, but... 
I got from your presentation here that if this area, Moscow pulmonary specifically, wants to continue growing at any sort of a rate that is even approaching what it has been in the last 15 years, we should probably continue on with this project and other projects like it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're recruiting a t world class researcher, to one of the two universities, well, or one of the three big, big universities, right? And you Google Travelocity, and an airport, a local airport doesn't show up. What does that tell you about the community you're thinking about interviewing? I mean, just something as simple as that is perception, right? Mm -hmm. Or the same thing for, for an employer. <clears throat> um, I think uh, air service is absolutely essential for both the attraction of, uh, of top, top rated employees and for, uh, for startup firms as well. And one thing that uh, Tony mentioned is that we sell a lifestyle here. We, we generally, the wages being paid by these firms are generally are good wages by, by our regional standards, but you know, compared to LA and Seattle, right, uh, they tend to be less. What we sell here is a lifestyle, right? And uh, um, that's what the airport helps, helps cement and bring together is that lifestyle the quality of life factors. And, you know, I look at the University of Idaho and the employees that stay there, they stay there because of the, because of the lifestyle they have. Those that, those that lifestyle doesn't fit, they tend to leave. You know? And I think that's true both employers and employees as well. And the airport helps facilitate that lifestyle. Another point, interesting point that you brought up is that the slippage is only 11% that would go down to Lewiston. So that tells you the importance of their airport as well. Uh, and the, most of that slippage, if we close, we go to Spokane, which would completely go out of this area. And, you know, the FAA is very interested in both these airports, and that point right there is probably one of the reasons why, because it's completely uh, ingrained in both economies and significant. Walter, you got any points? I think Jim covered mine on the, the triangle to some degree. I, could, I had trouble getting my head wrapped around a... a Seven, six or seven times difference between one study and the other and how many jobs there are. It makes me wonder. It's been 50 years since I took Econ 101, so it uh, makes me wonder the value of it. Well, airports are, transportation is not an easy thing to model. Um, you've got to model the, I mean, and it depends on, um, it depends upon, um, on everything that you're including in, in that basic study, right? So you've got the actual airport operation, you've got the federal dollars that come in, uh, you've got all of the firms that depend upon the airport, you, include, you incorporate those into the, in, into the analysis. You've got to make an estimation of tourism, uh, the tourism dollars associated with it, and frankly, that's where the biggest variance was in all the studies, was the tourism numbers, and it always is. Um, tourism is, 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 is difficult to measure. Um, so it isn't like, you know, if we were to do a comparative analysis of Clearwater paper, give you an example of an industrial firm, um, and it's a fairly complex firm, but the, now the, the, the estimates would be very similar. Um, when you're doing something like an airport that's as complicated as it is, you're going to get, you're going to get those kinds of variances. Well, you know, it's a terrific uh, getting a chance to see um, the numbers and the different things that you brought forward to us and the, you know, they, it just is very evident to me that we continue to work together for, through collaborative efforts, This not only this community, but the community, the entire Palouse, to make this work for us as a region because it's just so doggone important with the universities, these two cities, these two counties. We cannot let this get by us. And the smaller outlining communities, too, as well. You know, Palouse, Garfield, Troy, Idaho, and so on and so forth. Other questions for Dr. Peterson from Council? Thank you so very much for that wonderful report. We look forward to the written one, uh, Dr. Peterson, when it is done. And thank you, Tony Bean, for your wonderful presentation and giving us an insight on everything with the airport. Thank you so much. Good.